I'm Allie. I came out after 20 years of marriage, and I have three kids. I'm Melissa, and I have two kids, and I came out at 37 after an 11-year marriage. This podcast is about coming out later and the struggles and victories that come with it. When coming out feels like the end of the world, but it's really just the beginning. This is The Lesbian Chronicles. Welcome to The Lesbian Chronicles. Hello, my friend. Hello. It's been a minute. I know. We haven't talked much at all. You've been on vacation. Dude, I feel so bad because I know we have plans tonight that I'm very excited about. And normally I would be like responding to messages, but I don't. um, I've been literally so busy that it's like if I have two minutes, my mom is getting the phone call. Um, Mm. So anyway, I hope everyone knows I'm coming tonight and that (laughs) I'm not just like totally MIA, but um, I don't even know, like I have to scroll through what everything you guys have said to even know where we're going. What we're doing. What we're doing. (laughs) I think there's like a restaurant involved. I saw some TikToks come across. (laughs) Um, I think the TikTok was like (sighs) trying to find a restaurant, pinpoint a restaurant with a group of women. How many women are coming tonight? I think there there's seven of us total. Oh so, wow! Okay, it's um, a big and it's to celebrate uh, Christine's birthday. Very cool. No, I love that. Um, I'm super excited. I even though I'm not responding at all. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I haven't been that responsive either. Okay, sometimes that's good. sometimes group messages like they start going so quickly. I know. And like by the time I look at it, I'm like, well, I missed all the jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I chiming in now? So you guys, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. Um, I did see that there might be some dancing later. Yeah, we're trying to find somewhere to go dancing. Our plan initially was to go to the basement in East Atlanta. Those of you who don't know about the basement, I almost feel like I shouldn't say this because I don't want to give away the secret. Um, yeah, I know. I love East the East Atlanta, the basement is one of the best places, yeah. or maybe the best place it's in Atlanta the to go best. dance. Yeah. Um, cause it's not like super duper club vibe. It's like underground club. Good vibe. songs. Yeah. Good, yeah. Um, but tonight, I don't know if what they're doing tonight is really like going to be our vibe. So what is it? We're trying to, um, it says it's called champagne trap and oh, I don't shoot. know what that means. Trap scares me. <laughs> <laughs> what about, so, um, there's another place that I remember people talking a lot about. I don't even, don't count me. Oh, you know where Mary's in East Atlanta. Yeah, you know what? Mary's is good, but every time I go in there, I feel kind of claustrophobic. Yeah, it is very claustrophobic and Because it's like a hallway. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I don't get an opinion because the chance of me ending up at location number two, I'm going to give it 25% odds. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, which is actually kind of high for me. That, that is. I, yeah. gonna, I'll, I'll try to work it. Well, let me There's tell a chance you. we might go to Second Friday, too. That's always on the Oh, list. wait, a Second yeah. Friday tonight? Yeah. Well, that's what yeah. we should be doing. I know. Where is it? Um, it's at church. Well, of course that's what we're doing. <laughs> that I will do. That you will do. If that okay, if okay. that tips the scale at all, that I will do. Okay. All right. Um, but I guess I should say I moved. Yeah. And like, let me just tell you like what a crazy thing. So I'm out of town. We first of all, before the house even hit the market, we had an offer. So and they gave us three weeks, okay, to get out, but said that we could rent it back from them for ten days. Okay. The night before closing, I shit you not, the night before closing, someone's dad shows up and starts like looking at the contract and is basically like, you can't let these people rent back. If you're going to let them rent back, you need to get a security deposit and our real estate and my closing depends on that closing. So I'm also closing on a house. So at the 11th hour, you won't even believe what they asked for. Okay. They wanted a $50,000 security deposit for us to stay there. So what? I'm like laughing. I'm like, that's laughable. You're, you're not getting it. It's not in the contract, not happening. I'm laughing. Okay. But at this point, they're like, we aren't showing up at closing unless you guys are out basically in 24 hours. Oh my so God. I called my movers and I'm like, is there any chance you guys can move us out? Like I'm not paying this ridiculous amount of money. And I don't even... I part of me was getting so pissed that I'm like telling the movers, forget it. Like I'm not moving. They could just, we're done. They're not honoring the contract. They're in breach. We're done. So I was getting really pissed. And you know, my agent, Jen. Mm-hmm. So finally I'm like to Jen, I felt like my back was against the wall and I'm like, you know what? Call their fucking bluff. Tell them we're not yeah. great. No problem. Let's not do it. Contract yeah. over. We're done. I don't need it. You don't, we're moving on. So I said, they have one hour and then I'm done. 
Like, I'm not messing around with these people. Like, I was so livid. So finally, it ends up that we come to an agreement, but we're going to get out, but we have like two days, basically. So I get all my shit packed up. My movers show up at eight o'clock at night, load oh up my, my truck. Eight o'clock at eight night? Eight o'clock at night, they moved us till 1 a.m. But oh my God. keep in mind, I haven't closed on my new house. So I had nowhere to go. So I'm in a hotel. My moving trucks are literally loaded, sitting in front of the new house, waiting for it to close. This is, I'm not joking. This is nuts. Wow. So then, and my, my kids are all in town. Like, this is all going down. Chris is like, holy shit. Like, I, I can't even help. Like, it's too much stuff for him to even help me. So I finally get to my closing, and then there's something else, some other issue. So it's literally, by the time I close, it's two days later at like 7 o'clock at night, and then my movers that night at seven start moving my shit in. And it's, it was literally like lunacy and I'm in, I'm in. Oh my God. Like I'm all my stuff's moved in the kids, but that is all I've been doing. That sounds living. so unbelievably stressful. It was so stressful. And I was angry. Like, I'm like, how do you yeah. come back the night before? Like, like how is that even possible? It's not. I mean, I've they were in breach. Anything like I mean, that. The, especially a fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand. Their broker like, showed up at my house and basically looked at the buyer and said, "You are in breach. Not only will you lose your security deposit, these people are going to sue you. Just so you know." Yeah. So wow. finally, she was starting to like get it, mm-hmm. but um, oh, it was so stressful. And I was like, I don't want to lose my house, like that I'm in. Yeah. So I was starting to get like scared, also Man. of. And not to mention, that's layered on top of kind of what we're talking about today, which is something I haven't said, but Maria and I have split up. I'm officially saying it. Um, It's been Melissa knows. I know I sound like I'm not upset, but I've been very upset. This has been going on a long time. It's been awful. I just wasn't really ready to say it, but I'm starting to get like messages from people that they know. And so I just feel like I, I wasn't going to say it until I thought all hope was lost. And, um, but anyway, that, that is why I'm, I moved and this all happened quickly, but the breakup didn't happen quickly. This was coming on over months and months. Um, we were separated for a while. And then finally, I think we both realized we are just happier, not together. And yeah. And you guys tried, we tried, we tried and we tried. And I think the takeaway for me is, and I remember my therapist saying this like years ago, she's like, there's going to be, there are going to be women that can handle your past and your ex-husband and your family. And there's going to be some that it's too much. It creates too much stress in the relationship. And I think that is at the end what happened. It was just, that became such an elephant in the room. It reached a fever pitch at Owen's graduation when my whole family was here you know, Chris was at everything and it just became unbearable. It's untenable. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. like that relationship and Chris actually really likes her. So I think that also made it more kind of sad for me because he feels a sense of like, he's responsible for this relationship, not working out, Mm. but he isn't, it's just, it's not, our connection wasn't what it needed to be. Their love is there. The connection isn't. And so it's because of so many layers of arguing and resentment about my past, really. And I think at the end of the day, like she deserves to be happy and I deserve to be happy and we're better off not together. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely speaks to like how difficult it is um, to like coming out and, and having this past where you are tied to this other human totally for the rest of your life always you and know? i want when it you, that way yeah and it i think it can be a difficult thing for people to step into sometimes they feel like it's not that big of a deal sometimes it becomes a big deal it became um, a big deal but like it's just a layer like you said like dating later in life like you're coming with baggage like without question like yeah. no one is coming out and, and not having something big to carry. It's true. And I think like, it seemed like I know if she listened to this, she would say the full story is that in the early days of our relationship, we were so close that there were times when he was so down after our divorce that he, 
he would say things to me that maybe from the outside felt inappropriate. Like you're my person. I still care so deeply about you. He didn't want me romantically, but he, I'm his best friend, his, the mother, like he needed me in those days. And as we grew that changed, but it was just like the damage was done. I think. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, for Chris, he had a harder time with dating and a harder time with letting go. And I think that is another thing to kind of remember is that when we're leaving these men, they're not, they're straight. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Like they want to be with us. They want to be with us. It is really heartbreaking. And I do feel a lot of like empathy for them in those situations of like how heartbreaking it is to just be like, this is my person that I have to let go of because they're not fulfilled by me. Yeah. And you know, I, it's been hard to watch my ex-husband move on really quickly. It felt like, but at the same time, it's like, what a relief to, to see how quickly he was able to get it and like, see how someone else can love him differently and all those things. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's so it's so hard all around for it everybody is. involved. And I know, think too, without like, question. one of the things that has come up for me lately that I'm really questioning is like, I I know I've voiced this before, but it's like I'm I as I was going through this process, I realized like in my marriage, and I know I talk about safety all the time, like it makes me sound like I must be so insecure that I have to feel the safety, but like the safety he provided me is something that is really, I'm still searching for. And it's the safety of there is zero question anyone's coming or going. It's the safety of like, I can say stuff and have an off day and I'm given grace um, that I haven't found. And like, I don't know, sometimes I'm like, does it exist unless you have children together? I have to think yes, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I think that's something that weighs on me. I think you need to look at it differently though. Yeah. And, and think about the safety that you create in yourself. I hear that. I do. And the fact that you're this badass that's really killing it at life and raising kids and, you know, buying houses and running a business. And like, if that, that is one thing that I have really taken to heart over the past year like nothing's guaranteed that's true you know you can have all the safety in the world but nothing's guaranteed because what if your partner gets hit by a bus you know yeah I think like like, I hear all that and I believe it like I'm not I believe all those things I think for me though it's like look how what a badass you are but what if I don't want to be a badass I know trust me I don't want to be a badass I want to be tired (laughs) I know I want a partner I want to not have to worry I want to have not because I need security I don't need financial security I don't need I want someone to sit on the couch with and safely watch tv and not worry that they're mad or worry that I did something or worry I never had that in my marriage Mm -hmm. and I don't she never had to worry I never she would yeah. say it's because I wasn't invested, but I don't, I don't believe that. And I don't, that's not my truth. Like my truth mm-hmm. is I was invested. I stayed for 20 years. We were best friends. That's why we're still very close. Mm-hmm. I clearly was invested. I, I'm not willing to let go of the investment. But for I me. I can't say that I ever thought like he's going to leave me. I never had that thought, but I definitely, there were times where I just didn't feel like he's going to have my back, Yeah, you know, like that kind of thing. But I don't know. It's, it's, it's definitely something like that. I'm, I want all those same things. Like you're saying, I really truly do. And I'm, that's one of the hardest parts of like my breakup is like that I've lost this person. I really thought that like we were going to do life together. Um, but I've also realized that like wanting it so bad puts you where you choose poorly. I know. And I won't do that. I get that. I hear that. Like, um, and I don't want to, I, I really want to be intentional about who I get in, in my next relationship with, because I would like that relationship to not, I don't want to ever experience the absolute guttural heartbreak that I've been going through the past six months, Yeah, you know? Um, and I, I really hope that like this next person is it. And so I really want to be true to myself in that. But I do think that like, part of it is, is just getting like, to where you're just so calm and comfortable within yourself that you're not grasping at whatever comes next. 
I agree. And I, I definitely agree with that. And I, but I, I do think too, like being intentional about who you even, I tell my kids this, like intentional about who you give your time to intentional Mm -hmm. about who gets to be in your circle. It's a privilege to spend time with you. So don't give away two hours to randomness almost. Like I feel that way right now. I feel that way in my move. Like I'm creating the space where I want to heal. I want to get quiet. I want to lay in my bed and just be, take a bath. Like I'm, I want to do all those things, but I think, yeah, it's like at the end of the day, I also, I want Friday nights with not having to worry about plans because I'm lounging at home with my partner. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my goal. But also if you don't have plans and it's like, you find other things yeah, to do. Totally. You know? like, and that's the space I'm in right now. Mm-hmm. It's just like being quiet aside from this wild birthday party tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I will find myself like if I have a weekend where I don't have many plans, I will find myself like creating this like long list of things that I'm going to get done. Like, Ooh, I'm yeah. going to paint the bathroom. I'm, I'm going to paint clean like, my house. You yeah. Know, do all this stuff and plant st- stuff in the yard. And then like when the day rolls around, it's like, mm, I think I'd rather just sleep in yeah, and then like leisurely get up and like browse on my phone for a little bit and then yeah. maybe watch a show. Like I'll try to find like one thing to accomplish right. during the day, yeah. like do some laundry or clean something. But right. I'm like, it's kind of nice to just like chill and not really do anything. Like I feel like I've been so go, go, go the right. past several years. Actually, really, since my kids have been born, I feel like that. Yeah. No, I hear that. That's definitely true. Like, the things that I want to do would be even just, like, take the dog and go hiking and, like, not – I don't have to do that with someone. I'm perfectly happy doing that on my own. I love running. I love reading. So I think it's just long-term, I know I want to be with someone. I'm not one of those people. I have friends that are like, I really don't. Like, I'm – I don't mind dating people, but I don't want to yeah. be with someone. I know I, I know. do. I definitely want want someone down yeah. the line for sure. Yeah. Um, but it is kind of like I'm trying to embrace, like I've decided the universe kind of wants me to be single, right? Yeah, now. that's fair. Because it's like I've tried. I've like tried to get, like I said, like a little bit on the dating apps. I've tried to like connect with some people and, and everything is falling flat. Um, I'm also realizing like I'm terrible at flirting. It's <laughs> I don't believe awful. That. Yeah. It's embarrassing. Um, and I'm like, the universe just wants me to be alone. So I'm falling into that. But one thing I really like about not having someone to kind of like, quote, answer to is that I can eat whatever I want, whenever yeah. I want. Like, there's no discussion on like, what restaurant are we going to go to? Like, but they don't have this, you know, yeah. like, all that kind of bullshit. It's like, I can just be like, this is what I want for dinner. I'm going to order it and go pick it up. Like, and no big deal. That's like, true. No discussion. It's funny that that's like yours. <laughs> Mine is more like, I thought about this last night. Like Chris came over and was doing something to help me in the new house. And he was also like talking to the AT&T guy for my internet, like trying to get my, make sure my internet was set up and make sure I had good stuff. I don't know. He was just doing it partly for me, partly because his kids all need good Wi-Fi at the house. So he's, he's like, gonna hear it if they don't have, he's going to hear it. So he's like there doing stuff. He ends up bringing food. And then like, I end up folding Reed's laundry. And I'm thinking as I'm doing all this stuff, these are all like massive triggers for my partner that I, it mm. wasn't a problem really, but like I would just not do it. But like Chris being there without me feeling such anxiety was an interesting change for me. Like, I do want that. She's right. Like she said, you want him to be around and at things and she's not wrong. I do. Like, that's Mm -hmm. my truth. By the end, I said, you're right. I want him at the dinners. I want him at my, everything my kids have to do. I want him there. I don't mind asking him for help. I know she, that's something that was a trigger. It doesn't bother me. Like it just, and like, I like to fold Reed's laundry. Like, I know it's probably not great for him. I like doing it. I was just I love, thinking Reed's not putting away his laundry. He puts it away, but I love folding his little underwear and like oh his little God. t-shirts. So I enjoy funny. it. This is, this is the youngest. Let's Yeah, he's my that. youngest. Like, this for is what sure. happens with the youngest. My big kids do everything. Like, they don't. Yeah. But I just am realizing, like, I don't mind it. And I like yeah. it, actually. Like, I want to see his little things, and I like to put his soccer stuff together. I know. He's got to learn how to do it. But, like, right now, that's the space I'm in. 
Well, I will say I've learned to be cautious about what you allow your kids to do in your house because I've been like giving mine like a lot of free reign in the kitchen lately. Yeah. Um, we have set mac and cheese on fire. <laughs> I remember that. And Kaylin put a plastic plate in the air fryer the other day. Oh my god, no clue. No <laughs> like, clue. She was I she was gonna make chicken nuggets and I'm like, Do you know how to make them in the air fryer? Yeah, I got it, mom. I got it, mom. You know, you she's don't got, got it. Like, she ain't got it. Year old. No, I go open it. <laughs> the plate is melted. Oh my god. In the air fryer. But the thing is the nuggets cooked fine. I still felt really like yeah, it worked. let's hope that they don't end up like with cancer or something yeah. because um, <laughs> God knows. I think that's, that's great. Like I, I don't, and sometimes like even Reed will say I can do it, but part of it too is like, I want to be in there with him and like his, if I'm folding on his bed, it's like, I, this is like random and maybe it's the p- space I'm in right now where I'm like a little like needing say, you've got two that have left. The yeah. Nest. Two are leaving the nest. And so it's like, he's this kid still and he's a little baby really when the, you have a third there are they are a baby yeah not that that's like a positive thing but it is like nice to be with him and no, if room. you ask my mother about my 38 year old brother she would say he's still my baby and is he a man child or did he turn out okay he's turned out okay he's okay. redeemed himself the past like uh eight years or so but He's married now, so he has a, a wife. Oh, she'll uh, whip him into which, shape. Which helped. <laughs> yeah, she'll whip him right into shape. But he was definitely babied for a long time. But that's also what drives me to kind of like teach my kids some things to be like more self-sufficient because I don't want them. I like, of course, I, I love to do things for them, but I, I don't want them to go off to college and be like, I don't know how to do my laundry. Or, or to be like a like, shitty roommate. Like, I think yeah, that would suck. I, yeah. I don't know how to clean up after myself, right. you know, those kind of things. So I'm just trying to like instill those things in them. And they do get an allowance. So I'm like, you need to do something. To I like agree with that. Yeah. The money. And it's minor shit. It's like, bring the garbage cans in, you right. know, put away your laundry. Uh, he does put it away. Just put it away. And I, like I really it. don't give a crap about folding stuff. Oh, you just throw it in the drawer. Pretty much. Okay. I wonder though. I mean, it's all stuff that shakes out. Like they have like athletic shorts. Totally. And stuff. It's not yeah, like yeah, yeah. No, you, I'm not. Breast hey, khakis. Listen, no judgment. So, throw it in that drawer. Um, and I'm not one for making beds either. Oh, I'm a bed we've maker. Got, like, company. Okay. Like there's no need. Yeah. I, the, yeah, there probably is no need. I don't. I do the bed making because I want to get into a made bed. Mm. So it's like a me thing more than it's a like I care I what don't. it looks I like. I want my rat's nest from the night before. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, like those things keep coming up for me that are like, okay, my life is probably easier right now because of I don't have any. There's no tension anymore. That's gone. There's no eggshells. I'm not worried. That, you know, things are imploding because they've imploded. Yeah. So. Well, and I will say too, like, I understand that feeling. Like I had that feeling with my first girlfriend. She was very um, anti me spending much time with my ex. And it was difficult because I tried to accommodate it at first, you know, I really did. And, but then when I was like noticing, like, I can't even take 10 minutes when I pick them up. Like she's like texting me yeah. asking me if I'm like done. That would like, be, what do you guys yeah. talk about? And right. All these things. And I'm about? just yeah. like, dude, like, and I'm terrible at that kind of, like when, when someone's confronting me like that, I almost act guilty because I'm I like, I, I forget I what we talked about. Yeah. I don't know. We and, talked about you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I've been put in like a police interrogation room and I'm going to like admit to murder. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> like, well, if, she, if, if Maria ever listened to this, she was a wonderful partner. Mm-hmm. Like this was just our thing. It Absolutely. was like the sticking point. We've gone to therapy about it. Like there's nothing. She's say, perfect. Like let's. Yeah. She's totally Marie's amazing. Wonderful. She's amazing. Great, great fucking person. Totally. So sweet. So yeah. kind. Fun. Um, All the great things. Great cook. You know. All the like, things. Yeah. Great Botox injector. Yes. <laughs> Fabulous at that. So um, anyway. Yeah. That's where we're at. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it does suck, man. And it's like. I think the thing too is like, as we're, we get so excited with coming out that we're going to meet this next person and everything's just going to fall into place. And it's just like, it's not like that. No, it is not like that. Like the, the Glenn and Abby story is like the exception. Yeah, it's true. You know, and I think too, like, I think it's like Goldilocks. I said you, 
you have to see a few to know like what's perfect. Like what I'm looking for right now is a thousand percent different than what I thought I wanted. Mm -hmm. Do you hear the sirens? Oh no. Okay. There's sirens indicator. Um, so I think too, like sometimes it's like you have to, you have to be in it for a minute, date a few people, see what mirrors back to you. It's like Jamie said, you, you date people that mirror back to you, what you need to see at that point. My catalyst was exactly what I needed at that stage. The next yeah. woman was exactly what I needed at that stage. Maria was exactly what I needed. And we have wonderful memories. We both said that. Like, I wouldn't trade it. It's not like I wish I didn't have this relationship. I'm thrilled I had this relationship. It's just not, it, it was a season of my life. And it's not, it's not the person that's going to be long-term. Maybe down the road, that'll look different. But right now, it, it wasn't working. Yeah. So, and I think that is a good point, too. Yeah. It's like, I can, I can say the same thing. Like, the people that I've encountered and dated along the way, they were who I needed in those moments. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, if my catalyst hadn't been such a hard ass. Yeah. Would you I never would have left. Moved on. No. Would I have done this? No. You know, like, and even my last relationship, like, I needed to see what it was like to fully love someone inside and out. Yep. You know, like I've never loved someone with like s- such pureness in my whole heart. Yeah. And like to see that I have that in me now. Yeah. Like, nothing else. I'm like, is gonna... I'm not going to settle for less. No, no. I love that. That is beautiful. That's really, really said in such a lovely way. Like you, she taught you that. Yeah. And I think there's something really cool about that. Um, For sure. And I mean, it's, it sucks and it's disappointing. And like I said, it's the most guttural heartbreak I've ever experienced. Yeah, I relate to that. But I'm also like, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to see where I can grow from it. Right. Yep. I think that's really, really cool. And I know like my best friend, I was saying to her that like, I really want someone soft, like that just is like, I, and she's like, oh my God, you're going to be so bored. I know you. Like, you need to be like pushed around. I'm like, I think I did at one point, but I don't think I'm the same anymore. Like, mm. I think I liked the challenge a year ago. And now I'm sort of just like, I want to just have this like really soft place to land every day that's not constantly a challenge. I, I just, I, I didn't feel that way a year ago. I feel that way now. Yeah. And so, um, we'll see, maybe there, maybe my best friend is right, but I just, I don't, I think I'm ready to just have a settled, quiet situation. Yeah. Well, and take time to get settled in your new place and yeah, really spend time with Reed and I'm really enjoy excited that, that to like, time. we just had yeah. our first night there two nights. I've only slept there two nights and, um, I love it. Like, I'm so happy. I'm realizing like, Laura and Jessica are literally houses away from me. Andrea and Addison are right at one block from my house. That's I mean, amazing. It's just like I have this cool, my neighbor came over, introduced herself. She was awesome. Like I can tell I'm, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I, I feel that. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, and I love the house. Like there's nothing I feel like I would change um, and even like seeing my furniture come to life in the house makes me feel like I just feel the energy is positive. Like I can tell I'm turning a corner of my, my grief. Um, and I know I sound light, but Melissa can tell you this is three, four, five months in the making. I've had time to grieve. I've cried. I've fought. I've done all the things. I just didn't come out publicly and say it until now. And so yeah. I don't want to sound I light. Mean, I'm not light. I'm just, I've no, had time. You're not at all. Like, I've had I a lot of time. I can 100% attest to how difficult this has all been. And I think it is really, really difficult for us as podcast hosts yeah. that are really just normal fucking people yeah. that we do share about these experiences because it is very personal, you know? Yeah. And it's one of those things, those hurdles that I've kind of had to get over um, and not sharing fully about what's going on in my life or whatever. Like, I know now that like talking about this kind of stuff really helps other people. Right. And so like, as, as hard as it is, I know it's helping. And I'm sure that what you're sharing right now is going to help a lot of people. Um, because it is really difficult to decide to, to walk away from a relationship. And it's like, how much 
how much um, conflict is normal. Like I remember like being in therapy and they were, and Jamie said this, Dr. Jamie said this, it's not about how many conflicts you have. It's not that you can have conflicts all day, every day. It's how do you repair the conflict? What does that look like in your relationship? And at the beginning, we were really good at that. We would come back together. We would be, we would say we would level up every time. It was like we would reach this new plateau of goodness. And I think what happens is that you, you start to resentment builds when these things come up and then your connection dwindles a little bit and then you don't repair anymore. It's like you have these arguments that used to repair and level up and now you don't repair. And so they just build and build and build until there's no connection left, really. I mean, there's a connection, but it's minimal. And you're just thinking about the past and how good it used to be and how it's not anymore. And when you don't have that connection, you stop kind of trying anymore to make the person happy. You just don't. Yeah. There was no effort on either of our part by the end to really fix it. I mean, it was just like too late um, because the connection was gone. I mean, it was just like we would lay in bed at night like strangers. I think I even verbalized to her like two months ago. I'm like, I feel like I'm living with someone I don't even know. Like, mm-hmm. I don't God, know your yeah. clothes. I don't even know your stuff. I don't know your schedule anymore. Like, I really yeah. don't know where you're going to be today. Whereas that that part been... is really, really yeah. hard. I've, I've felt that way lately where I'm like, I don't know you anymore. I don't it's know so you anymore. Bizarre. But imagine doing that and living with yeah. someone. Yeah. Like, I would get home from work. And you're still living together. We're still, still living feel. together. We're still hoping it works. But it's like there's no more. She had no idea what was happening at my work. I really didn't. I used to know her schedule in and out. I really, I, I would ask. But then it was just like, not this full conversation. Like, there, I don't know. Like, the connection was gone. And it was too late to. I've learned a lot about that, too. It's like, I could have repaired it. Knowing what I know now, I probably could have fixed it. But by the end, I didn't care anymore. Like I just, Mm -hmm. there was no repair because there was no connection. There, there was, it's a stranger. I, you know, I I mean, okay. So that's, that's how I felt. And she would say the same, but I think what we were grieving is two years ago, how good it was. Mm -hmm. And so, but that's different. She's different. I'm different. We're not Mm -hmm. even the same women. Like, so anyway, it's. It's a strange thing to have someone so in your life. I mean, we were we were going to be together forever. And then mm-hmm. to have it be completely over. And I was at my parents. And it's, like, interesting to be there with my family. And everybody's, you know, I'm going through it all with them. Yeah. A hundred. Uh, so, yeah. I totally get that. Like, uh, 4th of July. Yeah. Um, my <laughs> ex-husband's wife's stepdad. <laughs> So let me, let me do this. Ex-husband's wife's stepdad. Okay. Got it. Yes. Asks me, where's your, where's your girlfriend? Mm -hmm. And it's like, here's another person that I got to like say this to someone that met her and had like a memory, great conversations together, you know, spent holidays, like multiple holidays. And, you know, and he's just like, oh, like that sucks, you know, like it does. Yeah. And it is just like, yeah, man, it, it really, it really does fucking suck. It does and, suck. You know, it's, it's, even though we were together for two years, a little over two years, I guess, that's not that long in the grand scheme of things, but it's long enough to get connected with people. Of and course. Yeah. Be close to family members and stuff like that, you know? Um, so there's just, I mean, like we, it, it's just so layered and there's so many things to mourn and grieve and process, you know, it, I, I've just, realizing how much time it really takes and the importance of just kind of like allowing yourself that time to like fully process it. Like, and the pattern that I see with people getting in relationships immediately afterwards and like, yeah, that's a great way to move on because it helps you forget, but it doesn't help you process anything. No. And I think it's true. Very, very, very important to say you might forget it now for a few months, for a year, maybe two years, but sooner or later, you got to take your medicine. And so you can get out of the relationship and take your medicine. Do the quiet time. Don't do the thing where you get busy with somebody else and you can do that. Or you can jump into something, but you will pay eventually. 
You yeah. will have a situation, you will be sad, you will grieve, you have to go through it. So do you want to do it now? Or do you want to do it when you're already in a relationship with someone else a year from now? You have to do it. And let's be real. Like, that's what happened to me. Okay. You know? Say more. Um, w- with my ex, she was out of a relationship that was really hurtful to her. And she yeah. needed to feel good. And I, now I will say she wasn't dating with the intention of jumping into Never. relationships. She was no. dating with the intention of like having fun. Yep. And then we met and, you know, it was like, we were two magnets. And it's and, so tempting. Like I don't fault Newman for doing it. Right, it's so right. tempting. And if I met it, someone. It was kind yeah. of like once we pushed the domino, there was no putting them back up. No. You know, but it is like, it, it, there came a time where she was like, I need to, she had to take her medicine. This. I need to be on my own. Yep. I need to take my medicine. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And I get it. I understand yep. it fully, but I'm also like, but my heart is brutalized on the sideline, Yeah, you know? I hear and that. so I'm really focused. I do not want to jump in another relationship with the idea of like, I'm still mourning this other person. Yeah. Right. It's not fair. But it's no. no one's fault. It's like, I know I'm saying all this. If I met someone tomorrow that was like, oh my God, you're everything I wanted. I don't know how you don't do it. Like, I don't know I mean, how you yeah, fight it. Like, like you- and I think also a lot of the times coming out of a breakup, especially one that's traumatic where the, yeah. you know, it's happened suddenly, people are in survival mode. They're yeah. doing what they can to get out of bed in the morning. Yeah, right. Oh, and, God, I relate to that. Every day you know, I would wake up and be like, how do I feel today? I don't know. Yeah, and like there's a, there's, Something to be said about what it does to your ego to not be chosen by someone. Yeah. Right. And you want to, what's, what better way to fuel your ego than to get other people to like lift you up? Yeah. But, and I'll tell you, thinking about too, like you versus me, your children are younger than mine, my big ones. And so I think too, like I had these built in, I don't lean on them. They are my children. They aren't my friends. So I don't want to give the wrong impression, but I do there, you know, one of my daughter's 20, my son is 18. They both rallied around me in such a way, like Tate came home from school and said, I am here. I am here. She just left today. She was here through the whole thing. Owen said, I am here every night with you until we are moved into that house. And then I'm still staying until you tell me you're good. Like I, my, I have adults basically with me all the time that are built. I'm not looking for another relationship, I guess is what I'm saying, because I'm full right now with helping them navigate this new chapter. And they're helping me because we're setting up together a new chapter. I keep saying that it's the people are not disposable. It's just that was a season of our life. And now we're going to have a new beautiful season together. Yeah. Well, and like, like you're saying, those people around you are filling you up right yeah, now. Yeah, they are filling me up you right know? now. Yeah. Like Michelle that we had on a few uh, months ago said, date your friends. Date your friends. She's coming in town next week. Yeah, I yes, know. I and hope I'm working. you can come. I know, but all every night she's here? Yeah. Ah. I know. Damn. Okay. Well, maybe um, we could do a lunch even. Nice. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, like I, I've really taken that to heart lately, you know, instead of like trying to find someone on a dating app to go meet and hang out with, like hang out with your friends, hang out with your friends. I think the woman on the dating app is going to make you feel worse. It's like, to me, it's like alcohol. It's like, it's fun in this moment, but you're going to have a hangover the next day. Like, yeah. Cause you're like, well, that wasn't it. Yeah. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. Wasn't it. So So it's it's not going to be it right now because the universe has decided for me. Well, and that's good then, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. it's just have fun and like date your friends, date yourself, date your date yourself, date your kids. I mean, in yeah. some ways it's like they're, they're fun right now because they're a hundred percent that thank you for bringing that up because I have really been trying to like embrace the fact that I get to be spend time with them one-on-one all yep. the time. I know I get to do that. It is not something that I would be able to do if I had a partner, my attention would be on my partner. Totally. And I would be like sitting poolside and not jumping in the pool with them. But yep. like the other day we like raced to get like dive sticks in the pool. It was like the most fun I've had in the pool in years. Yeah. You know, just to like be a kid with them. Right. And it's like when you don't have to worry about like how silly do I look? Right. Wearing a mask 
Yeah. <laughs> a scuba mask. It's like, who gives a shit? Yeah, who gives a shit? And just even the conversations like we're having, I think like last night, I mean, this is like Tatum's home. And of course, she's a 20 year old girl. She has 20 year old girl issues, whether it's periods, yeast infections, boys, girls, like there's all these topics. And so Reed, my youngest, who's 13, is like adores her. So he's like highly engaged in all of it, like questions and laughing and just, I don't know, like I wonder sometimes like the space with them is magic. Like I think I love listening and I wondered like if in my, you know, if I was still in a relationship, would I have been this present? Because I'm also worried about her son and like him feeling part of it. And I don't know, not, and that was beautiful. I loved that time, but I'm finding the beauty in this time too. Yeah, for sure. Um, so anyway, heartbreak sucks. We actually have a heartbreak coach that's going to come on in the coming weeks, which I'm really excited about. Yes. Um, because God knows we both could use it. <laughs> we need yes, it. Yes, we definitely need it. Yes. Um, but I'm looking forward to tonight. Like I'm actually in like a good headspace today. I hope it lasts. I love um, it. Where I'm excited. Awesome. I'm gonna shower, do my hair, get ready. Yeah. yeah. Look cute. Look cute. Let's we'll see love what it. happens. I'm excited too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, this has been fun. Yes. And I will see you later. When do you get to Atlanta today? I'm gonna get up there around 5 30. 5 30. Okay. And what time is our dinner rose? 6 45. Okay, very good. All right. Well, I'm All looking right. forward to it. All right. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Want to support the Lesbian Chronicles podcast? Rate us and write a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We love listener feedback. If you'd like to share your story, email us at melissaandally at gmail.com. That's Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-A, and Allie, A-L-L-I, at gmail.com. Or follow us on Instagram at Lesbian Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs>